All right, everybody, thank you so much for coming. Uh, we appreciate uh, all of our friends in the media coming uh, to cover this. Thank you to my colleagues for standing up here with us. Uh, the border is an existential threat and is an, it is an issue that as Arizonans and as leaders in this state, we have to address head on. Um, I would also like to thank uh, Russ Vogt and Ken Cuccinelli for coming, uh, two uh, former Trump, uh, high ranking Trump officials. And you know, this really goes to show that America first is not just uh, a talking point. America first is something that we believe in. We have to protect the people of this country. Uh, and just for way of background, uh, if you recall, Russ Vogt was the director of the Office of, of Management and Budget in the Trump administration. And Ken Cuccinelli was the deputy director of DHS, as well as the director of USCIS. Uh, so these are two individuals that know very well from two sides of the coin uh, about this issue. So as I mentioned, there is an existential crisis on our southern border. And it is a travesty that the people of Arizona and sadly the people across this country are having to deal with day in and day out. No longer is a border crisis simply a border state issue like we've been experiencing for decades here in Arizona. This has become a national issue with uh, border crossers being shipped all over this country, being shipped into small towns and cities across this nation from Nebraska to Maine and, and everywhere in between. If you recall, back in October, I submitted a request for an attorney general opinion. And I was essentially asking the attorney general whether or not the Biden administration is failing in its constitutional obligation to protect us from invasion. Now, an invasion would normally be referenced in terms of a nation state invasion. But when you look at these numbers, I think it's safe to say that this is an invasion. As a result of the current invasion, our community is suffering tremendously from a spike in criminal, criminals crossing our border. A few of those statistics, a 511% increase in assault, battery, and domestic violence arrests from fiscal year 20 to fiscal year 21. A 314% increase in DUI arrests from fiscal year 20 to 21. A 401% increase in illegal drug possession and trafficking from fiscal year 20 to 21. And it goes on, 187% increase in sexual offenses, a 1,666% increase in homicide and manslaughter. And so far, just through uh, October of fiscal year 21, the Customs and Border Patrol had seized 9,337 pounds of fentanyl. In the entirety of fiscal year 2020, CBP only seized 4,776 pounds. That is a 95% increase. And I was talking with Sheriff Daniels uh, from Cochise County yesterday, and he said that from July to December 2021, it cost Cochise County over $830,000 in incarceration costs because of these border crossings. Because of the ongoing invasion that's happening across Arizona's border, look, we intend to call on Governor Ducey. We all saw in his state of the state that he certainly, he talked a lot about the border crisis. He talked a lot about border security as an issue, but we're gonna call on him to not just talk about it, but to act on it and to invoke the powers that are reserved to Arizona in Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3 of the United States Constitution for the purpose of repelling the current invasion. But it doesn't stop there. As a legislature, we have a duty as well. And so when the governor takes those actions, we have his back. We have his back both in resources and we have his back in terms of calling for an interstate compact among states. Because as I mentioned, this is not only a border state issue anymore. This is now a national issue. This is an issue that every American, regardless of where you live, cares about. And quite honestly, it's not just regardless of where you live, it's regardless of your political party. It's regardless of your gender. It's regardless of your party affiliation. It does not matter. This is an issue that affects every single American and especially every Arizonan. And that is why it is time for Arizona to lead, not just with talk, but with action. With that, I'll turn it over to Russ Vogt to give some comments. Thank you very much. And it's a privilege to be here with these patriots who have stepped forward to be a part of what is necessary to save our country. 
You know, the hour is late in this country. Uh, it is 11.59. It is not 12 noon. It is not 4 p.m. It is 11.59. And if we do not have statesmen that lead in this moment in this country and do what is necessary to do big things, aggressive things, to secure the border and to save the country wherever it is needed, we will not be able to have the same country that we have had in the past. And as you've heard, the, the stakes could not be higher along the border, not just for the people of Arizona, but for the, the, the entirety of this country. And vital action is necessary. And we're not at the point where we can have just blame cast at the federal government. We know the federal government has not done their job. The Biden administration has not done their job, but they are in office for three additional years. And we are at the point now where we need governors who are concerned about this issue, and that's reflected in, in the, the recent State of the State by Governor Ducey, to step forward and to say we are going to unilaterally secure the border based on the self-help provisions that are reflected in the United States Constitution, Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3. That's what's necessary to secure the border. We are thrilled at the Center for Renewing America to stand with these important men and women who have raised their hand to call on the governor to do exactly that. And to hear more about what we are specifically proposing, I want to introduce Ken Cuccinelli. And the one aspect that I want to also draw your attention to, he's a senior fellow for our center, but he has also been a state attorney general. He knows the legal interactions between state authorities and the Constitution. This can be done. It is a matter of will. We call on Governor Ducey to do that. Good afternoon. And Thank you all for having me here. And first of all, I want to thank these legislators behind me to say this is more than a critical mass in this state legislature of commitment to step forward and address this issue aggressively, not just talk about it, as Russ mentioned, but to actually solve the problem it takes not just the governor, but a commitment of legislators like these good folks right here. And I'd like to, uh, you know, knowing we were coming this week, um, it was interesting to hear what Governor Ducey had to say on Monday, and I'd like to share a few quotes with you um, and then comment on them. From Governor Ducey, quote, Our southern border has never been more deadly or more dangerous. Meanwhile, the White House and Congress have decided to turn a blind eye. Absolutely true. This is a national crisis, and it calls for leadership. You heard about uh, from Representative Hoffman about the drugs coming over the border. That statistic in particular emphasizes that every town in Arizona and across the country is now a border town. All of the hard drugs that are killing Americans, all of them are now coming over the southern border. That did not used to be the case. That did not used to be the case. What Governor Ducey said on Monday about the border is absolutely true. And I'm so pleased that he appears willing now uh, to lead Arizona to stop the invasion of your borders, the invasion that's happening. He went on to say, quote, this is a dereliction of duty by the highest office holders in our nation. And in Arizona, we will do what they refuse to do. We will do what they refuse to do. Article 4, Section 4 of the Constitution is known as the Guarantee Clause. It guarantees three things. A Republican form of government, protection against domestic violence, and third, protection of every state against invasion. And it is that failure, the failure by the federal government to live up to its obligation to Arizona that Governor Ducey is talking about as a dereliction of duty. And he is absolutely right. So what happens when the federal government doesn't fulfill its obligation to protect you from invasion under the Guarantee Clause? Well, Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution says Arizona may defend itself. Arizona has the power under the Constitution to decide that it is being invaded and to repel that invasion without permission from anybody else, including the federal government, it is a matter of will and resources. And to have this many legislators this committed to giving the governor the resources he needs as commander in chief, and every governor 
is the commander in chief of your state's forces, not just the National Guard, but your civilian law enforcement as well, is absolutely critical. And he said, Governor Ducey on Monday, noted he needed resources and quote, boots on the ground. And these legislators are committed to giving him that if he will use them. On Monday, Governor Ducey announced to Arizona and the world his quote, commitment between states to do what the Biden administration is unwilling to do, patrol and secure our border. He said it explicitly. That is a direct quote. He can do this today with his power as commander in chief in Arizona, both with National Guard and civilian law enforcement. And as I said, Article 1, Section 10 grants Arizona directly. No, do not pass go, do not ask Joe Biden, gives Arizona directly the power to repel the current invasion that you are suffering without the permission or participation from Washington, D.C. When a state is actually invaded, it may defend itself. This is simple self-defense, but it isn't just simple self-defense, it's in the Constitution. What Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3 says is that when states are actually invaded, they may, and I'm going to go ahead and say the hard part here, use war powers. The Constitution uses that language. No one is talking about or suggesting that armed force be used against or in Mexico. That isn't what we're talking about. The simple act of catching people crossing the border, invading your state, and returning them back across that border is the only exercise of war powers that we're calling on the governor to exercise. And he has that power as the governor of your state. This is how he concluded, quote, the takeaway, in Arizona, we will secure our border. We will protect public safety. We will not back down. We will fight this fight until Washington, D.C. finally acts, end quote. Governor Ducey said that, not Ken Cuccinelli. If he is committed to doing that, he has the power today to do that. Could he use more resources? Could he use the backup of these legislators? Absolutely, but make no mistake. There is nothing he need wait for. He has the power today. If I were the governor of Arizona, I'm not sure I would do that without the backup of legislators like these folks here, but he has that too. He would not be alone and he'd be leading a willing team to protect Arizona and thereby protect the rest of America. And it's all from our U.S. Constitution and the support of your uh, legislators and with the political will of a governor who says he's ready to do just that. Thank you all very much and thank all of you folks for your willingness. Good afternoon, everyone. I just want to uh, remind folks that this is nothing less than a clear and present danger to our nation. Being a combat veteran and one who has served and fought in Iraq and Afghanistan patrolling the northern borders, this is an invasion. And I have seen this before. Being down at the uh, border also, I have patrolled with the Border Patrol and the Sheriff's Department and looking through night vision goggles and observing the traffic coming through the southern border, this is an invasion, make no mistake of that. So it's time now to send a message to the Biden administration on their poor leadership and their poor policies that are affecting Arizona and the rest of the country. It's time that Governor Ducey step up as he said he was going to do in, the state, in his state of the state. We expect for him to do that and he has the backing of the legislative body to execute that mission. But we also need to make sure we send the right type of troop down to the southern border. The right type of troop is going to make a difference. An infantry person can also make a difference on the border while they are working with our local authorities, sheriff's departments, and also public safety and border patrol. We have to get this under, under control. 6,000 6, folks are coming across our southern borders every single day.
It's affecting everyone in Arizona. It's affecting everyone in this country. It's time for us to stand tall. It's time for us to have the type of leadership that can move forward. And it's also time for us as legislators to send a message to the Biden administration that we will no longer sit idly by while our state is being invaded by foreign invaders. Thank you. Many, <clears throat> many believe that uh, we are against immigration. And I stand with my colleagues here today, uh, understanding that we are not against immigration. What we are is a nation without borders is no nation at all. And uh, we also understand that God is the one that created nations and he was the one that established borders. And you find that in Acts chapter 17. You find that God is the one that designated these, uh, these borders. With the invasion that we have coming through, we need to control and meter those that are coming through. Um, and because of my background, I tend to go back to some of the biblical perspectives. In Israel, God established uh, borders in the nation of Israel <clears throat> and required foreigners and strangers to assimilate into their society, number one, by being circumcised. Now, I don't, I don't mean that to be funny or anything, but that was a, a part of assimilation to that country that identifies you as an Israeli. Now, in our country, you go through a citizen's oath. My mother took that citizen's oath. My grandfather and uh, grandmother and her picked cotton in California, Nevada, Utah, and finally ended up here in Arizona. When she became of age, she went ahead and paid the fees to take citizenship classes. And when she, when she finished the classes, she took her citizenship's oath we want to see people come through in the right way. We need to monitor and control that border. There is an invasion going on right now, and we need to stop that. And I stand with my colleagues and all of the comments that, have, uh, that they have made. I stand together with them today. Thank you. Lupe, Lupe Diaz, uh, District 14. We'll go ahead and take a few questions now. specific about right here uh, Mr. Alvin, you sent a letter to our attorney general in October asking if you'd issue a legal opinion as to whether uh, the migration that you're talking about today constitutes an invasion in terms of the Constitution did you receive a response to that so I think there's a, a couple answers to that question one is you framed it as as immigration that's coming across the border this is not immigration that's coming across the border when you're talking about drug traffickers and human traffickers and sex traffickers that's not immigration that's illegal activity that's criminal behavior okay uh, so I think it's one it's important that we keep it in the right context because the framing of the question was on its face false Okay. But in terms of the Attorney General opinion request, uh, I have been in contact with the Attorney General's office and uh, they do expect to be delivering us an opinion. They have not, in, in keeping with their current practice, they have not provided us uh, any insight into what that will be yet, but they did say that they will be issuing an opinion. Woodrow Wilson committed federal troops in New Mexico because we had an foreign invaders, criminal behavior, criminal elements coming across the border raiding towns in New Mexico and burning burning a town of, I think it was Columbus. Um, so I mean, what, the, we have an invasion. The precedence has been set by a Democratic president to use our military force because there is an armed invasion of drug smugglers and human traffickers coming across. This is organized crime we're fighting. So, pure and simple. Well, well they're already down there. They're already down there. What changes yeah. under this? Talk to us a little bit about that in your role. Yeah. So look, when I was the Deputy Secretary at DHS, I was responsible as the Chief Operating Officer for the mechanics, the logistics. You're, you're asking about how does this actually happen? And the way it actually happens is whether it's your National Guard or your state police or cooperating with local law enforcement, or if you do get a compact situation in place deputizing other states, law enforcement to participate alongside Arizona, and you literally lay hands on people crossing the border, um, my suggestion, the way I would do it, is I would thumbprint them, give them food and water, and put them back across the border. And it's not more complicated than that. You're not building facilities. You're not holding for long periods of time. This is not immigration. Let me say that really clear. This is not immigration. And this is not immigration law. 
That's why I touched on the rather difficult phrasing from an from a you know a comfort level that these are war powers. But the only power we're suggesting anyone undertake is to block or hold people crossing the border illegally and take them back to the border and return them back into Mexico. But are you talking That's about the only return of a 287G program or you're saying the governor can impose So 287G is immigration and um, I would point out that logistically in the Department of Homeland Security a year ago we were returning 85 to 90 percent of illegal crossers in under two hours doing what I just described to you and you can do that here too and um, you'll be using totally different power you'll be using totally different power has been deployed several times and doesn't do this under the direction of this governor. Are you saying it's the, the governor who needs to change his mind? Yes. Okay. That's yes. The, go the governor is the commander in chief. And all these legislators recognize that too. They have a role to play, but he is the commander in chief. And it is he who has to give that instruction to both the National Guard and or your civilian law enforcement to undertake these physical actions to actually block the flow. And I will tell you that you can build wall, you can do all sorts of other things if you do not back it up with manpower that will return people back over the border, it will not change the illegal invasion flow into your state. It will not change it. The people contemplating coming into this country illegally all talk to one another. They keep extensive coordination this is all run and channeled by cartels and smugglers they have an intel network that they use if arizona becomes difficult to enter guess what they won't enter arizona now they some of them will go somewhere else but they won't be coming in Arizona. But they're not federalized, they're our National Guard, and they're allowed to guard our state. Our police officers under SB 1070, a law that we passed over a decade ago, and in spite of what the, the, the rewriters of history said, most of the major provisions are legal, allows police officers to detain people who they reasonably suspect are here illegally, and then contact the Border Patrol or Immigration to pick them up. The real problem that we have is not a commitment from this governor or this legislature. The real problem that we have is that when we legally apprehend and stop these people, when we turn them over to the Border Patrol, the current administration has turned the Border Patrol into the welcome wagon and relocates them. That's going to change in three years when a Republican president comes back, perhaps President Trump. Because he did, he did not only talk the talk, he did not only walk the walk, he built the wall. And we're going to do that. Mr. Cuccinelli, do you envision this force being armed? What rules of engagement should they use? Um, you know, so you do have, remember, cartels are running the flows. That doesn't mean everybody who comes across is a card-carrying member of cartels. But you do have to guard against violence from cartels. But overwhelmingly, you're going to be dealing with one-on-one um, -on -one interaction with uh, illegal invaders. The, there are criminals in here, there are gang members, there are sex offenders, there are cartel members. They are within the flow of people crossing into this state and into this country illegally. And you have to be prepared for all of them. That does not mean that you treat this as a military confrontation with each of these groups. You treat it like you do today, as an encounter with people who have illegally entered the country, but from a legal standpoint, this is treating them as invaders. This is not immigration law. I'm going to keep saying it. This is not immigration law. That is not the power authority they you're using. So. And if they plead asylum? <clears throat> the, the state of Arizona is obligated to follow all the treaties that the United States has uh, is a part of, for instance, the Convention Against Torture. I don't think it's very difficult to make the conclusion that Mexico doesn't torture its citizens or anyone else. Compact with another state or with a foreign power or engage in war unless actually invaded or in such imminent danger as will not admit delay. So the actions you're talking about, which of those categories would they fall in? Uh, unless actually invaded is but, but, gets but, outside of the congressional permission requirement. That's why it says unless actually invaded. Right, but it's talking about things that the states could, are not allowed to do unless invaded. So if, if you take a negative reading of that, they could do that if they're invaded. So which of those actions are we talking about? 
No, I think you're mis you're you're overcomplicating a, a simple provision. Um, and if uh, I would urge all of you to take a look at the CRA website, we've written up the Article One, Section Ten, Clause Three element in detail um, on our website, and uh, you can you can find that there for much deeper uh, dive into this. Yeah, I'm actually looking at a document from the CRA. Uh, the yes, you're clearly, now. but but looking at it and understanding it are two different things. Absolutely, I'm hoping I'm just a journalist. I'm hoping you can help me understand it. You cite sound this like an activist. And say <laughs> yeah. there can be no disputing that the influx of 1.3 million illegal immigrants, thousands of pounds of fentanyl, deadly narcotics, facilitated by widespread human trafficking events, violent national drug, drug cartels, constitutes an invasion of the southern border of the United States. Can you cite any statute or cases so, or legal precedents? So, to yeah, that's no, that's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fair question. There are no cases that have been decided on the invasion question of the guarantee clause presumably that's part of why representative hoffman asked for a legal opinion of the attorney general there is a supreme court case from the 1800s um, that deals with both the republican form of government and domestic uh, domestic violence provisions of the guarantee clause the luther case and in the Supreme Court in that case decided that it was a non-justiciable question, which meant that the court could not step in and impose its conclusions about the situation. So what does that mean here for the third guarantee under the guarantee clause? It means the state gets to decide. The state gets to, the state gets to decide, and unlike the other two elements of the guarantee clause, the invasion provision and the federal government's failure to protect Arizona against that invasion, as Governor Ducey talked about on Monday, uh, is accompanied by the Article 1, Section 10 power that you're reading. The other two are not accompanied by affirmative authorities for the states under any other part of the Constitution. That is not the case when they're invaded. There's, there's additional protection and affirmative authority for the state to act. I don't want to belabor this point too much, but what would be the appropriate venue for determining limits on the state's ability to decide what's an invasion? Did we say, oh, we don't like Californians, they're invading Arizona, we're invading no, Arizona. I'm going to jump in real quick. Now you're this, yeah, this, this is going to be really simple. They're, they're Californians. And I'll, I'll, I'll make this easy. No, you can't do Period. This is what the reality is, right? We asked the Biden administration to help us. Governor Ducey called him and said, we need your help. He said, no, we're not sending help. So what do we do? We sit back and do nothing. We allow this to happen. Human smuggling, the problem we have is directly related to our border issue. Sex trafficking, directly to our border issue. Drug problem, direct to our border issue. So if they're not gonna do anything, it's our time to step up and do something to protect our people. I don't care if you're Republican, if you're Democrat, if you're independent. The fact that we know women and children are being raped on their journey through to, to, to the United States is despicable. That's right. That we sit and do nothing. We have a fentanyl problem right now, correct? Do we have a drug problem in this country? Of course we do. Why is that happening? Because our border is open. It's time to put the politics aside and do something. The fact that we're sitting here and making this political is a bunch of garbage. Everybody across this country should be angry that this is happening in our country. This is not, like we said, this has nothing to do with people seeking asylum. This has to do with the fact that we have illegal activity, drugs, sex trafficking, human smuggling, all these things are happening under our watch and the administration in DC is ignoring it. That is wrong. It needs to stop. So if they're not going to do something, we will. Period. And not to make a, not to make a no, yeah, sir, but I think the question was, do you want to make it legal? Do you have the legal authority to act? I think that's what he was asking. Yes. I don't care. Yes. Well, we do the have the legal authority. Yes. Yes. If they're not going to do anything, yes. so we're going to, correct. If You're they're not going to do anything, oh, hold on, Wendy. If they're not going to do anything at the federal level, we have the legal authority at this point. If they're going to say we're ignoring you, we're, gonna, we're not going to, Ducey, Governor Ducey asked President Biden for help. He said, we need your help. We're getting invaded. And they were denied help. Yeah. At some point, we have to say, OK, we need to take it upon ourselves to do something. Whether you agree with it or not, this is where we're at. I mean, we, we have to do something. Founders left right, I think, that I think power the question is, and you said you don't care. There's some the, I, I take that back. You're, you're right correct. But, but my opinion is, bottom line, the Tenth Amendment's in there for the reason, right, in our Constitution. Our founding fathers put that in the Constitution for a reason, the state rights. Right? The states created the federal government, not the other way around. So if they're not going to do their job, it's time for us to step up and do the job as a state. Wendy Rogers, Flagstaff. My constituents want...
to be safe. We need to build the wall because the federal government won't protect us. So to dovetail with everything that Mr. Cuccinelli has explained to you, it is our duty to protect Arizona. Those of us in the military took a lifetime oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That's a lifetime oath. Many of you know I put in for an appropriation of $700 million for Arizona to build the wall so that we can be protected. Thank you. All right, thank you all for coming. We really appreciate it. We've got floor now. Hey, can we say something real quick? Yeah, absolutely. We're from the South. Yes. Yeah. 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 We're actually yeah. from the border, guys. So how about we, you get really border guys up here, right? So I have my seatmate here. And my other one spoke a little earlier. We see what happens down there every day. And what I want to do is challenge all you guys to come on down and see what's happening down there. Yes. See the incursion, what happens to our citizens. See what happens to our ranchers. Have you ever heard of North and South Bounders? You got the cartel that come up with all their drugs. Well, right now they have mules that they enslave forever. That they bring across. They go up to I-10 and they drop the drugs. Then they come south and they loot. They break into homes. They take all the loot and they go back across. We're not talking about immigration right now. What we're talking about is illegal incursion of our border and it affects the whole country. It affects our district tremendously. And we watched this over and over and over for many, many years. You know, there was a great time when we had what we called the Minutemen. And they came and sat down there and they forced these guys to move to other areas of this country. This is the worst invasion we've seen since that point. Come down and see it. We went down and we went with our sheriff, Daniels. We were on the border with him. And all of a sudden, as we're, we're going with him and we're seeing an operation happen, we hear this honking upside, up, up on top of the, the highway honk 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 you know what the cartel are doing now they're giving these guys cell phones and they use the GPS for people who live here driving down there to pick up their cargo pick them up they do the honking waiting for these guys to come out of the bushes these are the things happening down there come down and see it don't just listen up here and what, what we're talking about don't just be up here in Phoenix Come down and see the border. Have you all done it? See, that's journalism right there. Have you done it? That's journalism right there. That's what there. I challenge you to do. Come down and see it, and we'll take you on that border.